Another program that we support is in terms of water, this is the well for one of the villages, and in, this is in western Zambia. It, you can, it's the same well. One's close up, he's standing next to it. They get the water out of there. It's filthy, it's disgusting, and this is the only water they have to drink. Now, people like the UN come in and spend gobs of money and drill these big wells, which collapse in a few weeks or months. And so we support a program that actually was started by a Christian scientist in, in Zambia that make these wells out of cement. But it's, again, it's self-help. So the, the village gets the cement, and do you see the, the kind of tan ring or brown ring around the lower right-hand corner? That's all it takes is that ring and cement and sand, which is everywhere. And so they make their own well. They make a ring, they get in, dig down below the ring, it falls into the ground. They put another, see the level of rings on the bigger one? Then they make another one, dig down, it falls into the ground. They do it, it works, it's permanent, it costs almost nothing. And they're proud of their own work. And they protect it and take care of it. It's the kind of program we love to support. And these are some of the people that are beneficiaries of those wells. And um, this is a xylophone, a native African xylophone. Um, everywhere you go in these villages in the middle of nowhere, there are a million children. And um, <clears throat> that, um, that um, so it, we bring books to them. We also are supportive of a, of a schooling system there. But... Um, um, but so anyway, that, that um, um, we are also supporting a program where the people build their own schools. So people don't come in to build them. They, they get the cement and they get the fo format and, and all of that. And then they build them and it gets you know, inspected to make sure it's okay. So um, also because of the clothing that we've donated, in one of the villages they had a... a, a school building that had not been completed in many years. And then we said that anybody that helped in terms of building this new school, there were 2,000 kids in the remote area, about 30 or 40 were going to school. 2,000 children and only 30 or 40 were going to school. So um, in offering to give WAMU shirts, <laughs> and other ones, to anyone who helped, the first get-together that they had for building a school, they had 300 people there making blocks for the school building, and they all got their shirts, so we'd love to support that. So um, <clears throat> that in this picture, um, again, um, these actually are three from, from Zimbabwe, that... Um, that uh, these are people that I just met on this side. The, the man in the white in the uh, yellow picture and the woman on the right-hand end were both interpreters and, uh, the, in, for the Shona language, which I don't speak. And so then we would just find people by the side of the road and, and um, we would say, um, you know, this is the man that sent the stuff. Oh, how wonderful. And they'd say, is this the man? And they'd say, yes, it is. They didn't mean from the container. They meant for a healing. And, whoops, wrong way. Um, this was the healing that everybody in the entire valley knew about. This little girl named Sarah on the right, she was eight years old when I took this picture last year. She was six years old when they called me and said that she had broken her arm. Now, um, a farmer had, this, this is like nowhere near anything. It's so far away from everything. So a farmer came to do something with her family there and found that she had broken her arm. The thing is, it had been broken for a week. And the bones were sticking out of the skin. And he said, why on earth would you not take her to have that taken care of? And they said, what are we going to do? They have no transportation. 
We have no money. There's no hospital. There's no drugs. There's no doctors. What, what are we supposed to do? And he said, well, you, you have to let me take her into Harare, and I'll find a doctor that'll, that'll take care of it. And so they, they trusted him, so they let her in. And um, the other thing about her was that she was filthy from head to toe. I don't think you can see in the pictures. Everywhere you go, they're just on dirt. And the kids, you see them, you just, you wish you had a box of Kleenex or something, or baby wipes or something with so many of them. But um, she was filthy from head to toe and had dirt all in her wound. So he called me from his car and he said, can Christian science do anything about this? I said, well, of course it can. Well, the thing is that, that God would not allow a child to suffer. That's a false sense of God. And that, that for a child like that, that uh, she's innocent. Comple there's no justification for a wound or a, any kind of suffering, but there isn't for anyone. God did not make those things. They're errors, human errors. And so as I prayed for her, it's interesting because I had the impression she was like 16 or 18. I had no idea she was just this little whip. And um, it took two days to find a doctor that would help her in, in Harare. And that... Um, he took the x-ray and he came out to the farmer and he said, um, he said, you know, I, I really don't know how to explain this because yes, the arm was broken, but all the bones have moved back together and fused together in her arm. There, nothing's sticking out of the skin anymore. The, the wound has healed, but he says, you know, I've seen sometimes where bones go together, but not like this. And he said, and the thing that I don't understand is there are pieces of dirt in the wound where it's closed. So you know there was dirt in the wound. And he said, but her temperature isn't even up one degree. Her immune system is doing absolutely nothing, which means there's no infection at all. He says, that is much more amazing than the broken bone. And so um, <clears throat> he said, however, the whole bone needs to move back towards the wrist about an inch. He said, after what I've seen, I am not going to put a cast on it. Whatever power put that bone together, <laughs> we'll just trust it to move it back where it belongs. And so... Then, um, like I said, that was now three years ago when that happened. And then I never heard another word. Never heard another word. So when I saw her last October, that this is her family in the middle of the picture. Uh, the two on the ends are, are the Shona translators. And they made her lift up her arms and turn them around and smack them like this. <laughs> so that I could see that they were completely healed. Looking at her arms, there's not even scars. And it moved back. She does hard labor for her family to make money. And, um, and so she's very, very shy. And so she knew who I was, but she couldn't look at me <laughs> and couldn't talk to me. But the thing is, when we, they were saying, talk to him, talk to him, this is the man that healed you, and at least say thank you. <laughs> She's going like this. And, and so, um, as, so we got in the car, I told her goodbye, and that God loved her and would always care for her that way. And um, her family walked back to their huts, and she stood there, watched the car drive down the way, and there's no roads or anything, just drove down the grass. And um, just as we were turning beyond some trees, she waved. <laughs> and that's the last that I saw her. But everyone in this valley knew about that healing. You can't hide a healing. 